Okay. So the thing that we're going to be thinking about next is just extending our knowledge of graphs and how we draw graphs. And actually, you guys should be uh, pretty good at this because there's nothing majorly new. It's just going to be some good practice of some of the previous things that we've got here. Okay, so we're going to look about how you sketch modulus functions. Now, this is the only type of transformation that we haven't really thought about. We've talked about modulus functions just for linear graphs, but we're now wanting to make all kinds of functions. We want to try and introduce this modular function, modulus function that we've got here. So um, I have sketched y equals f of x, where f of x is equal to x minus 3, x plus 1. So we've clearly got a quadratic kind of graph here that's crossing at 3 and minus 1 and crosses at minus 3 here. And we just want to think about what might happen if we were to sketch the modulus of the whole function. Now, if you're doing the modulus of the whole function, that means any output value that you get that is negative, it becomes positive. So there's a part of this graph that won't be able to actually be there. Which part of the graph am I having to consider? This section here that is below zero, whatever the, whatever the y value is, is going to be made changed from a negative to a positive. So this branch here is absolutely OK to keep because it's all positive. This branch here, if I can draw it properly, is also absolutely OK to keep positive. But this bit down here is going to be kind of like bumped up from the bottom to the top so that it's going to kind of come over like this into this kind of shape. So anything that was negative has been pushed up into the positive part, and it's no longer going to be crossing at minus 3. It's going to be crossing at 3. Pardon? Um, or you could, if you wanted to do where the maximum or the minimum points were, we could complete the square. But usually, they're just going to ask where things cross the, um, the axes. It's only if they, they say, can you show where the maximum point is. Now, off the back of this one, um, you don't necessarily need to add this one to your diagram because it might, your diagram might get quite confusing, but I just thought I'd talk about this one. What do we think? What do we think this might look like? Everything is reflected. So the orange graph, because there's a negative here, if you remember what that does, the orange graph would then reflect down. So actually, what you would get for this is this shape if you were to do the negative modulus all around the whole thing, OK? Because putting this modulus around the outside is saying you're doing that to the y value. y is f of x. So I'm not going to include that one on there. Just thought I'd mention it because it's, it's an interesting one to talk about. And now this purple one is different. The difference with this purple one is that the modulus is being put around the input value. So this means if you tried to put in, I don't know, x as negative 5, you wouldn't put in x as negative 5. Instead, you would put in x as 5. And if you were trying to put in x as minus 12, you would put in what x is as 12. So this whole section of the graph is absolutely fine, because whatever you're putting in for x, you're still going to get the same y value all the way to this point here. What's going to happen? This part this purple part here is going to reflect in this line. So the positive section is going to be duplicated. So you get this kind of like W sort of shape graph like this. Because whatever you're trying to put in over here, let's say you're putting in the x is uh, minus 3, no, minus 2, you actually get the value that you put when you get 2 in. So it's kind of hard to think what's happened. But you're taking any of the x values. You're only allowed to put in positive x values because of this fact that we're only looking at positive values, which means this whole section of the graph here, you're never going to really be able to get that bit of graph, because that bit of graph is only attained by putting in negative values of x. And you can't put in negative values of x, because the modulus is all around the x bit that we've got there. Now, I don't really remember these as like a particular rule. I just, I, I think every time I look at them, I just think they, to me, they make sense. But if you were to think of them as a rule, modulus around all of f of x is anything negative gets reflected to the top. 
modulus just around the x part is that you're reflecting the positive section into the negative section of the domain. OK? OK, I'm going to do um, a question of this together. So here, we've been shown a curve. We don't know what this curve is. They've just said it's called f of x. And they tell us some points that it passes through. And it says, on separate diagrams, sketch the curve with modulus of f of x. We're going to do it on the same diagram, because I'm being lazy. So I'm going to do this first one here. I think we did it in orange before, didn't we? So I'm going to do it in orange again which means that all of this section is good. I'm happy with all of this section because it's already positive. But this tail part that's going down here is going to come like that. It's going to flick upwards. So I've taken anything that was in the negative section and I've pinged it up to the top section. And for this one, it does say to show where it meets the axis, but it's meet the axis in exactly the same points. So there's nothing that needs to be written additionally on this diagram that I've got here, OK? And then I'm going to do the modulus of f of x on the same graph. It's just going to be this little bit. This bit is going to stay the same. I'm going to do it dotted lines so that you can see that it's both orange and purple. And then that section is just going to reflect. So you just get this kind of bowl shape that you've got here. All of that information that was to the left of the y-axis, it's just not used because it's where x's input is negative, And we're not allowing ourselves to put negative in there. I'm going to do a bit of a challenging question for you to think about. What do you think that this might do? Yes. So in this one, whatever the value of x is, we're making it positive, and we're then forcing it to become negative. So it would do the opposite kind of reflection. You would take all of this branch here, and you would reflect it down here. OK, I'm only pushing you to ask that, because this is the kind of thing that might be part E of the question. And many of you are aiming for an A star. So it's always useful to think, what if this kind of thing happened to the graph as well? Okay. So I'm not going to include that one on there because I think it's going to get too busy. Everyone got that down? Um, so I've got this graph here. And I usually would have someone come up and sort of see if they can draw this on. But I don't know if we should with everyone sharing pens and things. But um, very quickly, we'll just do one more example of sketching this. Have you got this printed in your book? So I want you to do modulus of f of x. And then I want you to do f of modulus x in two different colors. Okay, So you, you guys can have it if you've got different colors. If you haven't got different colors, do one with a dotted line and do one with a dashed line or something like that. Okay. This one. So for this one down here, 
you're going to take, also, by the way, for the first one, this tail also needs to be flicked up to the top because it's in the negative bit. This one, you take any of the positive section that you've got and you reflect it into the negative section. So this branch, you're going to draw like that, okay? Nearly done? You were just like erasing it. <laughs> um, so I've seen people doing some sketching things, and these people that are doing the sketching, I think they think they're like Pablo Picasso or something, and they're properly going like this. They're going like. That's not how we like to sketch things in maths. In maths, we like to be bold and just say, "Okay, great. We're gonna just. There's gonna be this bit flicking down here for the orange. We're gonna try and do it all smoothly in one line, and then." You go like this. Okay, so that's what the, the first one should look like. Anything that was down here is now flicked up to the top. You'll see why in the exams they say on separate diagrams, because it's if we do have them on the same diagram, it is pretty annoying uh, or pretty difficult. I'll do this one in a thicker pen to see what's going on. So this one, which is reflecting it like this, this bit's all great. Can happily keep this bit of the graph because it's all the positive section. And then when it gets here, it's going to reflect. So that's what the the modulus one should look like, the one with the modulus inside the function, okay? And if anybody is wanting to be going on and doing maths at university, these points that we have here are like, you can't different, you can't find the gradient at those particular points there. They are like very, very sharp points because they instantly are going from one gradient to another gradient. They're not turning points at all. They actually don't have a gradient at that particular point that they're at. Uh, you would say that they are non-differentiable at those points, that they, they don't have a, a gradient. They can't be differentiated at the pointy bits. Well, why are they not considered a turning point? Because a turning point is when there is, um, where it's like smooth on either side, or as close as possible to it being smooth as on, and smooth either side, like this kind of thing. But when it's a sharp point, it doesn't, it doesn't fit all of the, uh, the definitions that would be a turning point, but it would be quite a lot of a lot of detail to go into that, but it's just kind of interesting to think that these like spiky bits don't necessarily behave how we would expect. Okay, we'll just do a couple more of these um, because now we're bringing in some things to do with trig. So we're now going to be sketching some graphs. I'm going to do the first one again. I'm going to consistently be doing these things in the orange graph. Now, my recommendation for all of these, if you're being asked to sketch it, is to draw the original function in one color and then to draw the, the transformed function in a different color. So we're going to draw sine of x from minus 2 pi to 2 pi. Now, I don't mind if you think of that in degrees, but minus 2 pi to 2 pi is how many cycles of sine? It's, two, it's going to be two cycles. There'll be four bumps, but two cycles, because it's really minus 360 to 360. So when I draw the sketch of the sine graph, there's going to be one of the cycles there and one of the cycles there. That's all the way from minus 2 pi over here to 2 pi. And this time we want to do the modulus of the whole thing. So you're going to have this. And it's going to just be like, a, I don't know, like hills, bumpy hills or something, like all in a row like that. Again, I should probably do this on the second diagram, but I've got my board here so I can do them in different colors. And then this graph is going to be reflected in the y-axis. So you start off with the positive bit, which is just normally the sine graph. And then you're going to reflect it over here. In fact, because I'm going over the top of the orange, I should probably do it like this so it's dotted so you can see that they're both still there. And then I'm just going to reflect it up here like this. So I think the one I've just drawn kind of looks a bit like a a moustache rather than hills of the first one, OK? Yeah. 
And so we're not going to actually do some of exercise 2E just yet, because I'm going to ask you to do some of 2E and 2F combined, because 2F is the same as this, but with just multiple transformations happening at the same time. So we're going to continue and put this in, in just one section, and then we're going to do some practice for about half an hour. Um, so for the next part of this, we're going to be thinking about having multiple transformations. At the moment, we've just been doing a single thing, usually just a modulus thing. We're now going to bring back in that information from year 12. So what you may like to be using during this exercise is this very, very first page that we had of all of the different transformations and what they actually do. This may be helpful for you during this exercise because we've got some things that are combined here. So the next one that we'll look at is sketching this. We've got this graph that, that we've been told here, and we've got three different transformations that we want to do to this graph, OK? So um, if you think about what is happening here for the first one, we've got this f of x graph. And we want to first of all sketch, and I'm going to do these all on separate diagrams here. We want to sketch y equals 2 f of x plus 2. Now, if you think about the order of these things that would happen, what, if you think about your input value, which is x, what is the first thing that would happen to that input value? The, well, the first, thing you're, yeah, the first thing you're doing to the value is you're adding 2 to it, and then you're multiplying it by 2. So your transformations are going to go in that same order as well. Okay? The first thing that you're going to do is the, this part inside. That's going to be the first thing. And then the second thing that you're going to do is this part that you've got here. And you think about that just a bit like bid mass of the order that things should be happening. So I'm going to sketch it in possibly in two stages if we want to for part A of the question. So the first thing is a shift so that it is going to to the left for this one, which means that it's going to look something like this. So the x coordinates are all going to reduce by 2, which means that a is going to become 0 minus 1. So the a coordinate is going to be here as 0 minus 1. And the b coordinate is also the x coordinate is going to reduce by 2. So it's just going to become 4, 4. So there's b, which is 4, 4. And instead of it crossing at the origin, which is obviously 0, 0, it'll be minus 2, 0. So I'm just going to label that one as just minus 2, 0. And then it comes just a, a pattern of really just connecting all these things together. And it doesn't have to be perfectly copied. It just needs to have the right shape and the right intersections points. So this is y equals f of x plus 2. And what we did is we subtracted 2 from the x's. That's what we did. Then we want to be able to take that function and stretch it by a factor of 2 in the y direction because of the 2 that we've got outside the front. So what that means is we're going to do is we're going to take the y coordinates and we're going to double them. So I'm going to be taking all of these y coordinates and I'm going to double them and see how that changes the sketch. So the a part, instead of it being 0 minus 1, it will be 0 minus 2. So that is 0 minus 2 for a. And the B part is not going to be 4, 4, not, not 8, 4, 4, 8. It will be 4, 8. So I'm doubling the Y coordinate because the 2 in front of it means a stretch in the Y direction. And what about the minus 2, 0? What will that become? It will stay the same because when you double the Y coordinate, when you double the 0, it will still stay at 0. Did, did you have a question? No. So that will be minus 2, 0. And so the graph, even though it might not look that much different, you could just write the correct coordinates, OK? So it's, it is going to look stretchier. It is going to look like this kind of shape. But it doesn't matter if it doesn't actually look stretchier. The thing that does matter 
is that you have the correct coordinates labeled. You could have drawn this exact graph here, but you could have just changed the coordinates, and then technically it would be a correct stretch, a, a correct transformation. Even if it doesn't look like it's been stretched, the coordinates are telling you that it has been stretched. So coordinates are more important than the, the look of it. The coordinates tell me it's stretched rather than um, the shape. So this is y equals 2 f of x plus 2. And for this one, we doubled the y's. So we've got two different transformations for this one that we've got here. The first thing we're going to deal with is this. And then this will be the second thing that we deal with here. What does the first thing, what does 2x actually mean is going to happen? Good. So for this first one, we're going to half the x's. And then afterwards, we're going to do, what are we going to do to the y coordinates? It's going to be a reflection. Yeah, so it's going to be a reflection. So I'm going to negate the y's. So I'm going to take the y coordinates and I'm going to just flip them from positive to negative or from negative to positive. But I'll still do it in those two stages. So the first stage that I'm going to do is I'm going to get all the x-coordinates, I'm going to half them. So it's still going to be crossing at the origin. Instead of 2 minus 1, it will be 1 minus 1. And instead of 6, 4, it will be 3, 4. So you're going to get this shape. Now, obviously, if you're drawing it on the same diagram, it does need to look squashed. If you're drawing it on a new diagram, the coordinates are the, tel are the thing that's telling you that it's squashed, OK? And then the second part of this, we've said that the y's are all going to negate. So it's still going to be 0, 0 for the origin. But instead of it being 1 minus 1, a is going to switch to become 1, 1, 1. And instead of B being 3, 4, it will be 3 minus 4. So it's going to be 3 minus 4. And then you just need to think about the reflection. So it's coming from the top and down. So it's going to come from the bottom and upwards like this. I've missed both of those coordinates. But you know what I mean. Some people are really good at this. Some people are just, no disrespect, some people are just really terrible at this stuff. Which is why I'm trying to tell you with the coordinates, because the coordinates are a nice way of just think about what's happening to the coordinates and shift all those things around. OK. So for the, the last one, for part C, the first thing we're going to do is what happens to the input, which is this negative part. Good. So the, the visual of what's happening is it's going to be a reflection in the y-axis. The thing that's happening to the coordinate is you're just negating the x-coordinate, which is obviously why there's this reflection, because you're swapping x-coordinates around. So the first thing we're going to do is we'll negate the x's. And then the second thing that we'll do is just going to be the modulus function, which means we'll, we'll see what that kind of looks like. So if I'm negating the x coordinates, and we've said it's a reflection in the y axis, the 0, 0 is still going to stay in the same place. But instead of it being 2 minus 1, it will be, no, we're negating the x's for this one. So it will be minus 2, minus 1. It's going to reflect, and it's going to end up over there. So it's going to be minus 2, minus 1. And b is, instead of 6, 4, b will be 
minus 6, minus 4. So that's minus 6. Sorry, not minus 6, minus 4. Minus 6, 4. And then you're going to think about how that looks like as a reflection. So it was going from the left, it was going down, up, down. So it's going to be now doing it in the reverse kind of way here. So in, it's going to be coming down, up, down, like that. And then the final bit of the question is to do the modulus of it. So anything that was below the axis, we want to reflect it up to the top. So you end up with this, 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 this. So I reflected this bit up like that, and I reflected this bit up like that. Drawing on your diagram, do as much drawing on the previous diagrams as you want to to help you to get your final diagram. And so we now know that this point here, which was B, is minus 6, 4. What would this coordinate here of the bump be? Wouldn't be minus 2, 1. Oh, sorry, yeah, it would be minus 2, 1. <laughs> My apologies. It would be minus 2, 1, because it's come up to the positive, and we've still got the origin there. And we don't know these points here, because we haven't been told about those points. So they're quite complicated, because you're doing lots and lots of transformations. So I'm going to pick some questions for us to do from exercise 2E, and then some questions from exercise 2F for these bits of sketching that we've got. Okay.